Welcome to the biggest deal I ever sold. Today, I have the privilege of talking to Bill Rawlings about his $9 million deal, along with why sometimes it takes 18 months to close, the importance of bow ties, and why you should always notice the small details about your customer, which could just earn you the big deal. The biggest deals in real estate and the stories behind them. Hosted by serial entrepreneur, Bill Svoboda. Brought to you by Close Simple, the trusted name in real estate communication. Who asks, how well does your title and escrow company communicate with you during the closing process? And now, the biggest deal I ever sold. Bill, it's great to have you here today on The Biggest Deal I Ever Sold. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Bill. Thank you for including me in this. I'm very excited to be a part of it. You know, it's an absolute pleasure. We've heard so much about you and you're a legend in Atlanta. Um, before we hop into talking about the biggest deal that you ever sold, what I wanted to start with though was just talk about your first deal. What was it like? The dollar amount, how did you get it? Well, that's, that's a great story. Uh, first off, I, I know as a broker too, the first client anybody works with is usually the craziest. I don't know, we attract, we attract that kind of crazy. but. Um, I got the first client I had off of an open house that I did that was unadvertised with three balloons in the yard. This um, lady comes in kind of expressing some kind of interest in the property, wanting um, to see if she could put a pool in the back or this and the But the thing that really stood out to me is when she was standing in the foyer, she was really looking about whether or not this particular piece of furniture would fit in this foyer, this, that, and the other. Now keep in mind, this is the first weekend I had my license, first weekend I'm out there, kind of, you know, desperate for business, this, that, and the other. So, you know, she leaves, we do the normal things. Um, as a guy, I don't know why this is like dating, but as a guy, I waited two days to follow up. So <laughs> on Tuesday, I call her and say, hey, Ann, this is Bill Rawlings. Remember me from the open house on Saturday. Well, to be honest with you, she really had no idea who I was at that point in time. I refreshed her memory. And, you know, again, being new and being very creative, I said to her, I said, you know, Anne, I know that there's a particular piece of furniture that was really important to you. And knowing that this house wasn't right for you, what if we could set up a time for me to come see the furniture that you have so that as I see new properties come on the market, I could probably let you know when the right foyer, frankly, comes along to fit this piece of furniture that's perfect for you. Her response was, oh my gosh, I've been looking for a home for three years. Nobody's ever said that. I would love to do that. I go meet her at her house. We ended up being under contract on another house within, um, within two weeks, to be honest with you, of me getting my license. Um, that was a very challenging transaction, I will tell you, partly because of me uh, not knowing what I was doing and partly because I was dealing with a very challenging client. But she then was an investor and immediately gave me two more listings. So it's like I was off to the races simply because I really paid attention to her body language and her actions when she was in that open house. Okay, So it was so that piece of furniture that did it. Question, what was that piece of furniture? I'm sure everybody watching this is like, what was it? Listen, guys, it was just this big armoire. You know, it had some sentimental value to it, but it was nothing that, it wasn't even that pretty of a piece of furniture, but it was just very important to her and important that it be in a foyer. But isn't that what, so that's what got you that first deal. It wasn't that you outwitted some other real estate agent. It was that you cared about the armoire. Like, out of everything, you cared about it that little listening piece. listening and watching buying signals is what it was, you know? She later told me, Bill, that she had actually been in the market, as I mentioned earlier, for three years. I was kind of the third real estate agent, but I was the only one who really um, paid her the attention that she needed and really, really listened to her when most people, I think, just got frustrated and moved on. So I want to ask you something, you know, in doing research about you and even talking to people that know you, one thing that constantly came up is just your attention to detail. I got you right now on my screen. I'm looking at you. You got your bow tie on, you know, people in Atlanta describe you as Mr. Bowtie, you know, and something that's common that I found with you is you care about those details, everything about your office and everything. Like, where do you get that from? Well, you know, I think it's probably somewhat inherent, but I, I attribute a lot of it back to my retail days when um, I worked in high-end uh, retailers and ultimately was work with The Gap. But, 
you like you literally could not have a light bulb out. You couldn't have dust on anything. You know, it was all part of a performance metric. So it just became ingrained in me. So everything had to look perfect for the consumer when they came in. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of my subconscious now, but people laugh at my desk. They look like it looks like I'm not doing anything because I literally have no paper on my desk. I cannot leave with anything on it. It is like a showpiece so that my office looks like it's, you know, available for a showing, frankly, from a real estate standpoint. I just learned to deal with things electronically. I don't do paper. I do not do clutter. Um, everything has to have its place and look perfect because I think it's an in indication of your ability to do your job and have attention to details in contracts too. So let me ask you this, your team, you have how many real estate agents on your team first? So when I say team, I want you to keep in mind, this is my office in effect, since I'm a managing broker, I have about 150, uh, real estate agents that are real estate professionals. I'll say that work on my team with me. And what's the biggest thing that as you look at all these younger real estate agents, like what are you teaching? I've heard you do some amazing sales meetings. Well, I appreciate that first off. Um, the thing that I look for the most is passion. Passion is something that you either have or you don't have. We can train you and teach you how to do what you need to do, but we cannot instill passion in somebody. And that to me is the biggest difference. Also, um, coupled with passion is, in my opinion, a need to make money. A lot of people think real estate is a, is a quick ride to big paychecks. And I think TV has done a lot of that with million dollar listing and all those kind of shows that are out there. When in reality, that is not the way the transaction works, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, it, it takes time. It takes money. So I honestly want people to work for me who have a need to make money. Um, because they will then push through those tough days and push through those rejections to get through the, to the other side. Whereas somebody that's not as motivated by money or doesn't need it as much is going to take their foot off the gas and maybe say, Hey, this is not for me. What was the deal in your career when you, when you got this deal that you said, wow, this real estate thing could really work for me. Was there a deal that sticks out when you knew that real estate was your thing? You know, Bill, I probably wouldn't say a particular deal, but I would say the volume in which I was able to pick up listings and do business. So in my first year, calendar year in the business, I actually did 22 transactions, which at the time was, you know, I don't want to say unheard of, but in our market, it was not commonplace. Um, my average price point at that point was only $222,000. I remember it vividly, but that accomplishment got me on the cover of a local magazine here called RE Magazine as being named as the rookie of the year for the Atlanta metropolitan area. So I have to say that's one of, that's an accomplishment that I'm quite proud of to be, to have been able to do that as a rookie. And what 22, how did you get that many deals as a rookie? Like what did that first year look like? You know, keep in mind, it's a very relationship based business. I'm practicing what I'm preaching today. Um, I lived in a condominium community that was a lower priced, um, I say lower priced, 150, 175 to $200,000 units. And because I lived in the community, I marketed heavily to the, to the hundred or so neighbors there that who knows their community best and who has a better vested interest in their property selling for the most other than somebody who understands it um, and has a vested interest in the equity going up as well. So I wasn't in it for the quick sale. I was in it for the best sale. And, you know, it all starts to snowball, Bill. You get one, two, or three, and then word starts to spread. They tell their friends and others, and it just, it's how it's supposed to work, but that's truly how it started. That's great. And coincidentally, Bill, this is an ironic thing. So that first client I told you about earlier, when I said she had two investment properties, lo and behold, coincidentally, one of her investment properties was in that condo complex that I was in. So I came out of the gate with a listing in my neighborhood, which is nothing but a God thing. And then she referred me to another friend. So within six weeks of getting my license, I had two listings in that neighborhood and never looked back. It really is a relationship business. It really is. 100%. This brings us to the part of the show where we are going to talk about the biggest deal that you ever sold. We already mentioned it. Nine million dollar deal. What did it feel like the morning waking up knowing that you're going to go sell a $9 million property? Well, keep, that deal took about 
18 months of showing properties to a client before it ever really came to fruition. The negotiation process was definitely a tough one. So when you asked me about that day, that day I was the biggest bundle of nerves you've ever, you know, you can even possibly imagine. Because as we all know in real estate, it's not over until the keys are handed across and the checks are, are pa pa handed out. You don't know what's going to happen at the table. And when you have um, high wealth individuals as both a seller and a buyer that tend to be non-emotional about the purchase, they could walk away from it at any time. So um, nerves were at an all-time high. And you can't help but do the math in your head about what that paycheck's going to be. Well, talk to me about that deal specifically. You said it took a long time. Let's talk about that nurturing process. Like, where did you first meet this person? Do you remember the venue or the setting? Like, where did that relationship start? I do. Well, that relationship started, the individual that was my client was an investor in other properties. And coincidentally, I had a listing appointment that I was going on for a property in a hot, hot, hot neighborhood. But this was a home on a phenomenal lot. Um, but the house had eight foot ceilings. You cannot pop the top, grow it, but it really needed to have a mega mansion on it, not this, not this ranch. So again, the value was in the land. I had had a, believe it or not, an inspector at another property tell me at some point that he is also, he basically was a contractor and they used him as an inspector, that if anything else came along like that, he wanted to buy it himself. So I left that appointment and in the driveway called him and said, hey, I've got this deal, do you want to do it? I wrote the contract on the hood of that car. The seller agreed to it. So we had it under contract. Then this contractor had to get financed for it. He originally, when he signed it, thought he had somebody lined up as a business partner. And actually that fell through. But at the 11th hour, right before we had to terminate for financing, he was introduced to this other guy who um, sight unseen said, yeah, I'm in on the deal kind of thing. We looked at several other properties that came along. That's why it took 18 months. It wasn't this particular property. So 18 months, for anybody watching this that's maybe younger in sales, 18 months, like that's how long that deal took. What did you do over 18 months to keep in front of that person to you know, not always be a salesperson, but just stay there? Well, it was, it was a significant amount of listening. It was a lot of phone calls at nine and 10 o'clock at night because you know it was all in building that relationship. And it wasn't just talking about real estate. It was talking about family, this, that, and that. I mean, we became super great friends. So, um, but it's, it's availability and it's not giving up. So what did that deal change about your business or change about you personally? Was there an impact that selling something of that significance, of that dollar amount over an 18 month period, that changed the way you looked at real estate and your job? Well, it certainly did. One, it told me that I could do it, okay? I also learned, um, and this is easy to say, even with a paycheck that big, the process for a $10 million home is the same as it is for a $150,000 home. The patience you have to have is significantly different. The time that it takes is going to be significantly different. But the trajectory that that sale put me on um, definitely was different because I was seen as a player then in the market um, versus somebody who just did a lot of transactions. So it definitely made a big difference. Does that drive you still? Like, does the big deal drive you still? Or what is the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning? Is it the dollar amount? Is it the experience you're creating? What is it that makes Bill Rawlings get up in the morning, put on the bow tie, walk into your office, inspire 150 other agents? What is it now? Well, I'm extremely competitive. Um, but I kind of am a bit more of a cheerleader and a motivator, you know, so that still involves listening. It still involves a relationship selling, but it's helping people get over the hurdle. But yes, I love the big deals. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, sometimes those $300,000 to $500,000 deals come together a whole lot quicker and you can pull 10 of those together a whole lot quicker than you can get that $3 million sale. So I um, am motivated by the total, not necessarily the individual transactions. But the more people that I can get up to speed working in a re referral-based, relationship-based business, um, staying positive about things 
and doing the daily gratitudes and things that they need to do to stay in touch with their clients, then I know we'll be successful, period. So, and I'm there to help them do it. So that's ultimately what motivates me. That's great. Well, Bill Rawlings, we talked about the biggest deal you ever sold, and that is impressive. I'm sure it's going to motivate a few people out there that are watching this to go, okay, it's not an overnight success. 18 months, there's nothing glamorous about 18 months of persistence and hustle and just stick with it. But that's what got your deal for you. If you had one takeaway, one piece of advice, one thing that anybody new in sales or maybe somebody that's been in sales for 40, 50 years, you know, and they're just looking for one piece from somebody like you, what would you leave everybody with today? One of my mantras is just ask. People assume people are going to say no. People assume that they're not going to get what they want. People are going to assume they may have another agent. My thing is just ask. The worst thing you're going to hear is no. And every no is one step closer to a yes. So don't make a decision for somebody. Just ask. Well, on that note, Bill, thank you for sharing the biggest deal that you ever sold. Um, if anybody wants to contact you, reach out. Best way to do that, give us your social handles, anything that way. Okay, well, my social on Instagram is at Bill Rawlings. Um, you can find my business page through Facebook as well. I'm just Bill Rawlings on, on Facebook. You Google Bill Rawlings Atlanta, I'm pretty sure you're going to find me, Bill. Mr. Bowtie, there we go. Thank Bowtie you. Bowtie Bill. Bowtie I Bill. I love it. Thanks for taking a few minutes with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, and you just keep crushing it down there in Atlanta. It, pleasure's been mine. Thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, hope I've made a difference to somebody who's watching today. I'm sure you did. We'll talk soon. Great. Thank you.